We have more fallout uh, for New Jersey Governor Chris Christie after he refused to meet with Sandy Hook parents before vetoing a gun control bill that would have set a 10 bullet limit on ammo clips. We talked about this last night. In fact, I had a very powerful conversation with the father who lost his son in Newtown. Now, the governor said that banning high capacity magazines would be, and I'm quoting here directly, trivial and simplistic as a solution to a complicated problem. And he had to say a lot more than that. The, the, the 10 children um, on the clip that they advocate for, that their lives are less valuable, if you take the logical conclusion of their argument, you go to zero. Because every life is valuable. And so why 10? Why not six? Why not two? Why not one? Why not zero? Why not just ban guns completely? I understand their argument. I've heard their argument. I don't agree with their argument. Uh, Christie went on to say that meeting with Sandy Hook parents would be, and I'm quoting again here, hypocritical since he had already vetoed the bill before they requested a meeting. Now, Christie's refusal and his remarks have not set well with those Sandy Hook parents, who I should tell you have been in a political group here. They've gone state to state. They've made their points. They've respected, understood when people have taken uh, the opposite perspective at the end of the day. But they say they've never been treated the way they were by that governor. Now, among those parents who was upset, Neil Heslin whose six-year-old son, Jesse McCord Lewis, was one of those who died in the Sandy Hook massacre. Neil, he was joining us on the set last night in RFL, and he had this to say. I think Governor Christie at least owes us an explanation to, I think he owes us an apology, um, because the, the remarks were uncalled for, unjustifiable, and, uh, but I think he, he should at least give a reason why he didn't support that bill. And it was the tone and everything, guys, that really upset uh, the, this parent and more. And, and if we're on the subject of hypocrisy with the governor using it, the governor had supported, um, uh, in fact, banning uh, 50 caliber uh, weapons originally. And when that piece of legislation to ban it came to his desk, uh, he vetoed that as well. So uh, not that I mean, they were so tone deaf. I saw Chuck uh, Joe Scarborough, for example, former Republican congressman uh, who's now doing a, a TV program at MSNBC. He took him to task uh, in a strong way today. I, you know, I, I, I always defend the governor, not on his actions, but I think that he's underestimated politically. Some of the most tone deaf stuff I've ever heard. And it comes across to me, TJ, and I said mm. this to these guys, is so politically calculated mm. to try and protect his next step if he ran for president in a national primary. Uh, I, I really, whatever you thought mm. of the governor, I thought more of him than what I've heard the last two days. Yeah, I agree. You know, we have, uh, my wife's from England, we have a relative visiting, and, and just yesterday, uh, I was explaining to this 20-year-old uh, relative about Newtown, about what happened, because where I live is just in the north part of the county, about 15 minutes, 20 minutes from Newtown. And um, yeah, you know, it's 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 a lose-lose when you when you start talking about it when you're a politician. I think, uh, and I think Christie has this pride thing, has this ego thing that really, you know, uh, it irritates him to have to edit himself and censor himself. Uh, you know, um, I think there's got to be a bit of frustration on the part of this guy and a lot of Republicans that they still find themselves continually talking about gun control and we're still not hearing enough about the mental health aspect of it. And also the fact that, again, had that, had that law times two been in effect in Newtown that day, Newtown still happens. Well, he did Tone say, death, Andrew, Tone Neil, Neil talked about last night that um, Adam Lanza had to basically uh, reload. And his son, in that moment, his late son, screamed to his six-year-old classmates, Gosh. many of, you, of whom are alive today. And it's not just this father, but others talking and about it. And if that reload, just If he had to reload earlier, yeah. Yeah. and if he had to reload more often, there would have been more opportunity for more lives yeah. to be saved or for more kids to have gotten out. The, the tasteless part of this for uh. me is that the explanation that we heard about, well, why not six lives? Because otherwise, it, those ten lives are unimportant. How that, did he but think that's, to say that? See, I don't think he did. I don't think he thought. It's, it's almost verbatim from from NRA support lines, uh, and that's that's where that argument comes from. This was this was less to do with his take on actual gun policy and more but, to but do with, my, with but here's my point, Andrew, with the NRA. Which was after last night's program, mm -hmm. um, 
and other conversations like it. The governor had to hear, okay? And we know some of the people close to the governor. And maybe some of the best people have been separated uh, from him as sounding board since the bridge scandal. Hmm. But nonetheless, he had to hear, this isn't sounding right, governor. This was a bad move. You should have met with the parents. And when you didn't meet with the parents, the last thing you should have done was marginalize him the way he does. Then to come out that day later, and to say... And double down. And to double down yeah. and say, 10, 12, what's the difference? I, I mean, my gosh, I, I just don't get... But that's Richard, he threw his top aide completely under the bus and basically called her stupid and, and basically indicated... All right, but, Don, but if you're into self-preservation, so, so you've been around So who's going to tell him that he's wrong? Who's, who, the, the person that's being paid as a consultant... Who's going to put their neck on the line and say, Governor, you're wrong? Because the moment you do that with this guy, he's an ego case. The moment you do that with Chris Christie, that's your last day on the job. Chris Christie, as I, I've been telling you guys for years, he is a bad copy of Rudy Giuliani. He's not even as good as he thinks he is. But you know what? You and know Rudy what, Giuliani couldn't get elected. He did show catch on September 10th. He did show contrition, whether it's manufactured, real. Let everybody at home make their own decision on that. When he gave that 90-minute press conference about the bridge, okay? Yes, he threw a lot of people under the bus. He talked about the high school, uh, you know, who was in what cool group or whatever, and all the infantile hmm. stuff. But he knew he was in trouble, and at least took some ownership of a problem. That he would have did what he did, it might have confirmed your suspicions about him. But I never would have thought the next day he would have said this. Oh, it I don't was, think I don't think it's a we we're objecting to what he said. But I don't think from his political strategy standpoint, it's right. a bad move for him. It's a very because good the move. other headline of all this is Chris Christie takes tough stance right. on okay. On but Andrew, if, you know, that's, the case, if that's the case, yeah. then why has the governor taken as many positions, including putting his arm around Obama and defending it later? He has taken positions directly contrary to the National Republican Party here when it has suited him. When and it he's has made suited good him. calculations. When it has suited him. This when he was running him? for re-election for governor. Taking on when, his, when his next yeah, concern Newtown was running up the score right. in the gubernatorial race, this is he's trying to get his his hat back in contention, or he's trying to get back in the race for the GOP mm -hmm. primary. We're going to see in our next segment that it's actually working. He's getting himself back into the into the All running right. for the GOP primary. Well, that's a perfect segue because yeah. when we come back here, we're going to be talking about national Republican uh, jockeying in politics. Um, but just as a final point here. I, I, I hoped at least the governor was better than this, and in two straight days, he went lower and lower. We'll be right back.